Nowadays, few people remember the reason for Everlight's wealth, the glittering mine. For a long time, it was believed that Moonsilver, the most precious and most durable ore of Eo, could only be mined in the Windwall Mountains, the Empire of the Dwarves. All this changed when an unsuspecting farmer found a piece of the shimmering ore while digging a well. A gold rush followed, and Everlight, back then a modest town, grew into the metropolis it is today. The mine was depleted decades ago, but the wealth remained. Blasted armor. Sure. They will fall. Would you look at that? I'll take a look. Interesting. Let me see. Let's see. <sighs> Sounds like a plan. Let's see. Huh. Intriguing. Huh? Huh. Intriguing. Sure. Never end. Here we 
go. Let's see. Huh. Interesting. Let me see. I'll take a look. This way, right? Get ready! You got it. They will fall. Walking corpses. Take them down. That way? Sure. Sounds like a plan. I'll keep you shielded. All right, here goes nothing. <laughs> Let me see. This way, right? Fair enough. Let's do this. Yes.
heroes. Come on. Don't die on us now. We'll do. Whatever's necessary. Help! Please! Give the word. Got it. Sure. Understood. Yes? You got it. Hmm? A golem. Don't let down your guard. You read my mind. Get ready. Danger up ahead! Ugh, I'm dead. I'll keep you shielded!
Understood. All right. You look at that. <laughs> Blasted armor. You got it. This way, right? Got it. Will do. That's the way? Huh. Intriguing. Mm-hmm. Will do. Sure. Whatever's necessary. Got it. Uh, all right, why not?
All right, here goes nothing. That way? Blasted armor. You got it. They will fall.
I'll take a look. Yes? <laughs> Blasted armor. Fair enough. Let's do this. We're back. So, did you find him? Yes. He's dead. But so are the mages. Blazes. I... I knew this would happen. Oh, god damn it. Well, at least you put this bastard to justice. Listen, Haggard. The political situation in Everlight isn't gonna get better anytime soon. And it's more than likely that someone will get behind what you're doing. I found out, and it wasn't hard. I'm actually looking for a capable smith. You? But what about the mages here in Everlight? They will still need help. But you can't help them if you're dead. Back in my camp, we're mages too. And we'll do everything to keep them safe. I... Uh, that's not a decision I can make on the spot, friend. Uh, let me think about it, will you? Where can we meet should I decide to join you? I have a scout stationed here in Everlight. Just talk to him once you've made up your mind. Think about it. I will. Ah, you're back. Yes, do I know you? Greetings, milady. Could you spare a moment? I'm here to discuss an urgent matter. We're really doing this, aren't we? <laughs> Ellen, help us. Um, sure. What is it? Well... Even a battle-hardened warrior such as myself could not help but notice your astounding beauty. All those years I've shed blood for the Queen and my country, but the battles changed me. I started to question the purpose of my sacrifices. I began to lose my resolve. There is honor in a battle, yes. But is honor alone enough to keep a man going? It is not. We all need something to fight for. 
Something to return to when the ordeals of battle are over, especially in times of darkness. It is hard not to lose oneself without a glimmer of hope. You, fair lady, are my glimmer. No, do not misunderstand. I am a soldier, and it was never my purpose to find lasting love. But your beauty reminds me that there are things worth fighting for. <sighs> I... I don't know what to say. Say nothing, fair lady. I know my passion is overwhelming. All I ask for is a strand of your golden hair to remember you by. I shall like to have it with me whenever I venture into battle, to shed blood for my country, for honor, and for the beauty of this world. I understand. Yes, of course, honorable soldier. Who am I to deny you such a simple request? After all, it is you who is keeping us simple people safe, isn't it? We are only doing our duty. Oh, such virtue. Here, take it. Will you... Will I find you in Everlight more often? You may, or you may not. But I will do all in my power to see you whenever possible. Goodbye, fair lady. Oh, goodbye. <sighs> okay. Let's just forget this ever happened, all right? That way? Sure. The hardest thing about business is minding your own. There are few cities where this proverb rings truer than in Everlight. With an underworld almost as large as a surface city, a provider can be found for almost every dark desire. However, the syndicates and gangs of Everlight have mastered the art of staying out of sight. Mostly, they do their business either behind closed doors or in the innumerable tunnels and sewers that run under the city like a web of veins, oozing with black blood. Interesting. Will do.
Let's see. Huh. Intriguing. Huh? Sounds like a plan. Sure. Look at that, boys. We're in for some fun. Highwaymen. That's the way? You got it. Sounds like a plan. That way? Or oh, keep you shielded! Sure. wasn't a particularly good poem. Rats with their hairy, ugly butts. They gnawed on our nuts, dangling dead between our legs. But maybe we fend them off next. This blasted elf, he just won't shut his trap. What's wrong? He's been citing poems for days. They don't make sense and they are horrendous. Someone should either pay him to leave or show him we don't want him here. Let's Someone see. should either pay him to leave or show him we don't want him here. Oh. 
All right. Just be careful. You know, men can be irrational. I do. Thanks, Dad. Fair enough, then. I'll see you tonight for dinner. And please help Mother with these draperies, will you? I will. Huh. Are you Jane? Um, yes, I am. Who is asking? A friend. I was sent by Vilron to give you this potion. Vilron? But what's in that flask? I I'm sorry, but this is a little odd. Well, it's a sleeping potion. He wants you to take it at sunset tonight, and he will do the same. It will mimic death, so you can escape from your families and be together. Or, at least, that was the plan. Oh, I, um, I see. Well, I hate to say it, but you're a little misinformed. Vilron and I had a lovely evening together, and yes, we, we kissed, but, but that's about it. He's, um, he's not really my type. Too impulsive, too, uh, syrupy. Um, that's not the way Vilrun told it. He said you love him as much as he loves you, and that it's your parents keeping you from each other. <sighs> oh, by Tiara. Yes, I told him that I loved him that night because it felt right in that moment, but then he started writing me these poems and sonnets, and by now I think there isn't a single flower he hasn't compared me to. And then he sent that letter where he asked me how we should name our children. That was the moment I, well, needed some distance. Don't get me wrong, he's a really good man, but I just can't deal with his enthusiasm. I'm sure he will find a girl that will appreciate his sonnets, but it just isn't me. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Then what do you want me to tell Vilron? I have to stop him from taking that potion tonight, and waking up all alone in the morgue. Well, if you're going to talk to him anyway, tell him the truth. Trying to spare him from rejection led to this entire situation. Tell him that I really appreciated our time together and that I know he will find true love sooner or later. All right, then. Sorry for bothering you. Oh, oh no, you didn't bother me in the least. This entire situation is unfortunate. Thank you for helping us resolve all this. I was too much of a coward to do it myself. Goodbye. when you'd show up? I came as fast as I could. Where are the villagers? In a safe place. Not the most beautiful part of this city, but it'll do. For now. Ah, and I sent Ralph to an apothecary. Despite the fire nettle, his cramps have gotten worse. I see. How was the rest of the journey? Well, since you made short work of the General's army, it was almost relaxing. Thanks again. I'm not the most pious of persons, but that the Harbinger sent you, of all people, was a true blessing. And I still can't believe we didn't lose a single soul on that journey. And I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. Speaking of it, hang on a moment. Here. I think you should have that. As a token of gratitude. Either way, that's not why you're here, right? You kept your promise, and I'll keep mine. Allies. Does that mean you'll introduce me to those friends of yours? Yes. In fact, I've already told him about you. His name is Philan Argo, the mayor of this city. You're friends with Everlight's mayor? Well, friends is a big word. Let's just say that he still owed me a favor. Will he meet with me? Yes. Just go to his house and tell the guard that you're sent by Clara Farland. She'll let you in. So, I guess this is where we part ways, isn't it? It was a pleasure, Tahar. Thank you for everything. Likewise. What will you and your people do now? 
Play it by ear, I suppose. That's what I've always been good at. Now would you- No, like Penelope. You cannot do this to me. He loudly screamed, full of pain and anguish. Penelope softly cast him a mournful glance. Her eyes dreamily drifted off towards the merciless and cold winter sky. But I have to, she silently whispered, full of remorse. Her tender breath tenderly caressed his haggard cheekbones, mockingly. My heart beats with yearning when I see her sweet and lovely face. For you, oh, my former beloved, my feelings resemble the deepest depths of the deep sea of dreams, but alas, I am still young. I want my heart aflame, burning brightly like the fires of Zarek. She, oh, my former beloved, is the spark that shall kindle my desires. A bitter tear bitterly flowed down Bartekius's face, as if slyly commenting on his endless, horrible suffering. The wind howled mourningly in the distance. A storm would come. If that is your wish, O oh beloved, Bartekius vigorously ejaculated, full of loving acceptance. Then I shall accept it, for I know that true love knows no malice, no jealousy. True love knows love, and love only. Ceremonially, he boldly knelt down in front of her and took her soft and tender hand into his equally soft and tender hands. Zestfully, he said, I shall wait for you. I shall wait for you. Go, O oh lovely Penelope, go and give this sweet woman you desire all the love you can muster. Make her heart rejoice in fierce passion like a sun-kissed red cherry. I shall wait, and when the sun stops shining, and the stars long have died, I shall still do so. For now, you too, O oh sweet Penelope, are my former beloved. Goodbye. Yes? Want to trade? Pleasure doing business with you. Come again. I'm getting new wear. Hmm. What is it? What was that? What did you just read? That was an excerpt from my novel, The Shackles of Desire. Do you like it? It was marvelous. Really? Thank you. That means a lot to me. 
It will go in print next fall, so be sure to grab yourself a copy. If you can read, that is. Yeah, sure. I'll think about it. Interesting. Someone should either pay him to leave, or show him we don't want him here. This way, right? Huh? Huh? Can I help you with something? That island in the lake, that's the Creator's Guild, isn't it? Yeah. Why ask it? It might be the distance, but it looks a lot more populated when I was last there. That's because after your father's war, a lot of the Creator's mages left. They were afraid of being out in the open, so to speak. Why? The Creator's Guild didn't participate in the war, did it? Same as Everlight. Yeah, but that didn't stop the common folk and the refugees who came here from blaming them. There were even attacks on the Guild. Uh, well, not all the common folk, as you call it, took part in them. I know the Creator's mages haven't ever done anything foul. What happened during that attack was a bloody tragedy. The mayor saw that the people who did it were put on the gallows. I want to cross over there. How much will that cost? Twenty-five gold. And no haggling. I want to cross the lake. Sure. Where to? Yes? As a neutral, a political association of mages solely devoted to the study of magic, the members of the Creator's Guild were among the few gifted that remained neutral during your father's war. Though not comparable to the great universities of Kalaya, it is safe to say that Fiara owes many of its magical and technological advancements to them. Here we are. Hmm. Impressive. And there's people down the hall. We should... Interesting. We do not get visitors often these times. Who are you? I'm Undergast. I suppose you could call me the head of the Guild. I sensed someone was coming, and that that someone had an intriguing aura. 
now I know who it is. You are Isamo Tahara's child, are you not? How do you know? Well, I have studied Isamo Tahara's magic quite extensively, especially since the end of the Mage Wars. He was a remarkable man. Yours and his magical aura have a lot of similarities. A remarkable man? Yes. Does that mean you supported him? No, that is not what I said. I merely stated that he, as a mage and a man, was remarkable, unusual or special, and therefore surprising or worth mentioning. My opinion on the war is an entirely different matter. Hmm. How are our auras similar? Well, hard to say. You can simply tell that you're related. And there's something else about you that is, well, strange. I get that a lot. Could you elaborate? Hmm. It is hard to say. There's something peculiar about you. An oddity in your aura which I cannot make sense of. I'm sorry. Either way, I assume you are here for a reason. How may we, the little that is left of us, help you? I was wondering if you could tell me more about the Creator's Guild. Maybe I should begin with the question, what do you know about us already? I know that you are a neutral association of mages that didn't participate in the Mage Wars. That's about it. Well, and that is about the core of our guild. We are mages devoted to study, science, and the preservation of knowledge, and we do not involve ourselves in political conflict. We were founded in the year 231 by a woman named God of Baudry. Ever since, the Creator's Guild has been a constant in the ever-changing political landscape of Nortander. So you are the leader of the Guild? Well, I do not see myself as such, but yes, the majority of the Guild considers me its leader. The Ferryman told me about an attack on the Guild, after the Mage Wars. He said it was the reason that there are so few mages left on the island. Is that true? Yes, but it was not just the attack. There was also an internal disagreement. That attack? How did it end? Am I right to assume you stopped it? Of course. They were trying to kill us, so we fought back and killed them instead. At least until their morale was broken. Looking back, I think that this display of power was something we should have done earlier. Only because we were peaceful, the people who attacked us assumed that we were defenseless. They will not make the same mistake again. Makes sense. It does. But again, it was not only the attack that diminished our numbers, but also a disagreement we had within the guild. What kind of disagreement? I would prefer not to talk about it. I am sorry. Actually, we're here for a reason. We're investigating the Bloodburn. Is there anything you or your guild knows about it? The Bloodburn? You're... studying it? I guess you could say that, yes. Hmm. Interesting. No, we do not know more about it than most alchemists or apothecaries at this point. Though our general consensus is that we doubt the corporeal origin of the plague. There is magic involved in it. Well, you're right about that. It's magical, and it's connected to the Shapers. The Tsarlan that... That's interesting. Say, would you mind to tell me more? You seem to know a lot of variables which we are not aware of yet. I'll tell you, but we should find somewhere to sit. It's a long story. Of course. Well, this is both fascinating and peculiar. What do you make of it? Mm, I do not believe in visions and prophecy, unless they come from a dream weaver, so I'm uncertain. There is no arguing that this man, Rondar Lacane, knew more about the Bloodburn than most people. And his clues led you to Mullendir, which is nothing short of impressive. So you believe that the Bloodburn is caused by Shaper telepathy, is that correct? It is a theory, but yeah. Rogue telepathy, so to speak. I see. Hmm. I would like to come with you. What? I was clear, was I not? I would like to come with you. Your story is nothing short of fascinating. The Shaper city, the Bloodburn, and this Nexus. I would like to accompany you and help. I have a wide knowledge of the magic and the Shapers, and have a strong interest in finding a cure for the Bloodburn. What about the Guild? Aren't you their leader? I am, but that does not bind me to stay. It is common for Creator's mages to head out to expeditions. 
They have become rarer due to the war, but still, there is nothing stopping me from coming back when our business is concluded. Hmm. Well, why not? Just know that it will be dangerous. I can defend myself. Quite well, in fact. However, there is one thing I need to finish before I come with you. Uh, study. Maybe you could help. This would facilitate matters. As long as it doesn't take too much time, yes. What are you studying? Simple. I have always been fascinated by the notion of sentience and the mind in general. What creates consciousness? What is it that distinguishes us as humans from a wolf who is slave to his instincts? Quite recently, a group of refugees who arrived in Everlight told me of a bizarre sight. They said that a stone golem took over the abandoned mine near the gates and has grown a soul, and apparently has been trading with the villagers and even befriended one of them. It all seems highly unlikely, but I want to investigate it. A monster with a soul? How is that even possible? I do not know. It is not the first time people have reported such occurrences, but most of the times they turned out to be a hoax. This is the first case I've heard that might be legitimate. If it's true, this might change the world forever. Can you imagine? The ramifications of such a discovery would be monumental. It is currently believed that only the five principal kinds are capable of conscious thought. Disproving that would change everything. Suddenly, would killing a monster not be a homicidal act? Would putting them in a cage not be considered slavery? And finally, is it right for the principal kinds to consider themselves special, chosen by the Guardians? What do you need my help with? Well, this is all an exciting scholarly prospect, but a golem is still a golem. So if the monster goes feral, I will require assistance. I can defend myself, but still it would be unwise to go there alone. I will get prepared and meet you at the mine. Do you know where it is? Tell me. Up north, at the top of the Iskander Mountain. I will go as soon as possible. Fair enough. I'll see you there. Yes? I'll take a look. Hmm. Odd fellow. But he's a capable mage, that's for sure. Let me see. That way? Huh. Interesting. The best wares from Kalea to Northander. You know how to bargain, don't you? I'll take a look. Let's see. 